favorite tools for studying as well as just kind of organizing my thoughts when I'm learning new concepts is a mind map, which is a sort of flow chart that you can use to connect ideas and concepts and show how things relate to one another. I use a free tool called draw.io. This is not a paid endorsement. I don't do any sort of paid endorsement type of things. It's all just me for the sake of helping other people. And so I just wanted to show you this tool in case it could help you too. I'm gonna go ahead and show you just like a demo of the sort of things that you can do with it as well as some examples that I made um, when studying for molecular biology and biochemistry in undergrad. You can do a lot of cool things with this tool and don't worry, all these mind maps can be really, really simple. They don't have to be as complex as a metabolic chart, um, but you can also expand them as much as you want as you think of new concepts and how they connect to one another. You can just keep expanding upon these. It's kind of like having an infinite canvas that you can work off of when you're doing it in this um, web-based form where you, just, you can just keep expanding your canvas um, rather than trying to draw on paper and then running out of paper, which is what happened to me in the past when I was using like paper. <laughs> so I'll show you how I make these in a minute, but first just how I use them. So if you're taking a course, what I recommend is making smaller, like more focused, but more detailed mind maps on the various topics as you learn about them, as I'll show you in a second, an example, and then also make larger mind maps that connect those smaller ones, but with less detail, instead focusing on the bigger picture relationships. Then as you go through the course, you're going to want to update these maps. And so things might come to you, connections will come to you. And thankfully with this software, you can kind of have as much space as you need and you can adapt your maps to include those new connections. And remember these connections can be all sorts of different things, inhibits, they um, build off of, they share components, various things like this that you can do, see connections between. So you're updating these maps as you go along. And then at the end of finals time, you have this great study tool and you also have the tool of studying by making it. Um, and so really when you're going through your studying, you should be adding more and more to those bigger, um, to those bigger mind maps. And those are the things that are gonna be really the most important. So that's gonna be a really helpful way to study. And the beauty of all of this is that you get it out of your brain um, and into a form that you can keep coming back to and looking at and adding upon. So let me show you those, what I mean by the smaller maps and the bigger maps. So if you go to my BB Resources Google Drive, you'll see this mind maps, et cetera. Um, and I'll also post a link to it. But here are some basically some examples that I have from undergrad. And one of the things that I was learning about in my molecular biology class was different methods that, of DNA repair. So a couple of examples are nucleotide excision repair and base excision repair, and these use a bunch of different mechanisms. And so I have detailed smaller maps on those specific mechanisms. And then I have, okay, well, how do these mechanisms compare to one another and when would you use what? And so I have this bigger overall map talking about how these different pathways, when they're used, where, what are the different components, how do they differ in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, and things like this. And then I also have, this is um, like transcription coupled repair and things like this, which feed into, okay, well, what's transcription? What's used in transcription? And how does that fit into the bigger, to the bigger picture? And so you can have all sorts of different levels of, levels of analysis and comparison between different things. You can also do a more specific, like explicit comparison with some sort of Venn diagram. There's lots of different things that you can do with this um, draw.io tool. And so now let's go and we'll take a look. Here's just a demo of the type of things that you can do with draw.io. So if you basically just go to start, you don't need to sign up or anything like this, but you could hook it up to your Google Drive or your Dropbox or things like this to have some sort of online storage for it. If you go to create new diagram, you can just, there's a bunch of pre-formatted ones that you can choose from, or you can just make a blot, a blank um, document. So I'm just going to make one that's going to be biochemistry mind map. Um, and you can see that there are different safe options as well. And I'm going to cre create this file. What it's going to do is it's going to give me this blank canvas and I can custom set the paper size if I want it to be bigger or smaller, um, standard size. You can also change it partway through. So if you run out of space or something, you can always make your um, make your canvas bigger. I like being able to kind of just play around with the canvas size so that 
if I find there's a lot more connections than I thought there would be, I can just keep expanding without having to worry about running out of space. If you go to your left, you'll see that there's a bunch of built-in shapes. There's general, uh, miscellaneous, you'll see there's a bunch of table layouts, a bunch of basic icons, shapes, things like this. You can even get your little smiley face, um, X's, lots of arrows, flow chart things. If you go to more shapes, you can find that there's even, even more shapes and icons and things like this. You'll find a lot of, you can find even things like company logos, various, um, various tools like that. And so this can be a lot of helpful things that you can find over here as well. And you can press apply if you want them to basically show up in your library over here. And as we'll see later, there's also the scratch pad where we can make custom shapes or import them into here and then be able to reuse them. We'll start out by just making a word. So we're just gonna make a brief mind map about biochemistry. If you go over here, you can press under general, you can press text, or if you just double click, it'll give you some of like these standard options. And so let's say we want text and we're gonna do biochemistry. And this is a little small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this font. We'll make it, um, we'll make it 30 point. Oopsie, I can't even spell biochemistry, which is kind of sad because that's my life. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to make this 30 points. Okay, so we have a biochemistry. That's just so small. We'll make that 40. You'll see that over here, we're going to have a lot of different options. So we can change the font color, the background, the border. We can, um, if we want shading, if we want lines, we can arrange things if we want it to be. And later we'll be able to see, we can align it to other, to other words and shapes and things like this. You can also use your trackpad to zoom in and out. So what is biochemistry. Well, biochemistry incorporates biology and chemistry. So let's go ahead and we'll put those terms on there. I'm just going to copy and paste um, and we'll put biology. Now we'll just do chemistry and we will do biology. Okay, so we have chemistry and we have biology. And I'll say that biochemistry is often more a little more heavy on the biology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put biochemistry closer to the biology. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose my a nice fat arrow to go down from biology to biochemistry. Okay, well, that's a little big, so I can alter the size of it with the, just doing these things. And if you press on like this orange one, it's gonna give you a little finer, um, narrow focus on the width of the, or the height. Okay, but biochemistry isn't just biology or else we just call it biology. Instead, it's a lot of chemistry too. And so let's go ahead and we'll put in an arrow for chemistry. If we go to one of these arrows, it's gonna let us allow us to add these like, um, markers in between where we can kind of change the direction of the arrow. So we'll start at chemistry and we'll go to biochemistry, but then we'll add one of these like waypoint type of things where we can actually change, change the shape of these arrows. So we can do something like that. So here we're showing, okay, well, the main, it's main, it's a lot, it's heavier than the biology side of things, but it also has a lot of the chemistry. Okay, so that would be biochemistry. Now, what about chemical biology? Well, here we have this sort of opposite situation. So if we have chemical biology, that's a big spacing if I want to go to style. Um, and Okay, so sorry about that extra enter, but if you want to go over to chemical biology, Okay, well here, maybe what I want to do is I can copy in this paste this arrow. Say, so, okay, chemical biology is heavier in the chemistry and it's a bit lighter in the biology. So I'll put another one of these arrows, but this time I'm gonna go from the biology to the chemical biology with a slightly, um, with a slightly thinner arrow. And so this is the sort of thing that you'd be able to do. And so now you're gonna be able to see, okay, so we have this relationship between biochemistry um, and chemical biology between chemistry and biology. Well, what other connections can we draw? Well, biology itself is built upon chemistry. So maybe I want to draw an arrow linking chemistry and biology. So if I want, if I go over here, 
if you go to click on the side of one of these boxes, it'll give you just an arrow and you can connect it to another box or to another word. If you want to alter the shape or style of these arrows, just go over here to style. If you double click on the arrow, it's going to give you the option to add text for it. So maybe I want to say like lays the foundation for biology. And now that's really big. So maybe I'll go ahead and I'll change the size of this font and move it off of the line so you can actually see it. And so this is the sort of thing that you can do. And of course, you can play around a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, well, what about chemistry itself? Well, that's built upon physics. So maybe I want to enter physics up here. Maybe this is there's running out of space. So what I can do is I can just select these all and move them as a group. Now what I can do is I can come over here and maybe I'll just copy and paste this chemistry and now we'll change it to physics. And now I can do the same lays the foundation for, um, but instead I'm going to draw the connection between physics and chemistry. And again, you can kind of just alter the shape of everything. If I click on the text, it's going to give me the option to kind of move where this label is laid out in relationship to this. I can then alter the direction of the arrow if I want to make it bend in different places so we can see the text, all those various things. So now we have, okay, physics lays the foundation for chemistry. Chemistry lays the foundation for biology. You mix a lot of biology with some with um, a fair amount of chemistry, you get biochemistry, and you mix a lot of chemistry with a fair amount of biology, and you get chemical biology. And then both of these can be used to answer cool questions. So maybe I want to put that in here. So what I can do is I can come over, I can choose a shape maybe, and now I want to double click on that to be able to type inside of it and be can be used to answer cool biological questions. And now what I can do is I can draw connecting lines, linking chemical biology and biochemistry together into this um, into this cool process. Um, and yeah, so again, you just kind of have to play around with making sure that all the arrows go where you want them. It's just a little bit of trial and error and that sort of thing. Um, there's also ways you can do this more, more systematically if you go to a range and things like this and set the points that way. They have a lot of built-in shapes, but you can also make your own custom shapes. One option is that you can import an image or a shape file. Another option is that you can draw freehand. If you go to this plus sign, you can kind of see you can introduce an image here, or you can introduce um, like a freehand. Here, basically, if you do freehand, it'll just give you this pencil type tool where you can draw something. If you want to draw, make something out of pre-made shapes, you can either go to here and you can go to image and shape. Here, you can customize the parameters of their built-in shapes, or you can just kind of do it by eyeball. And so if you want to make like an inhibitor sign, maybe what I'll do is I'll come and I'll draw a rectangle. I'll just copy and paste that, turn this 90 degrees, maybe make it a little shorter, align these together over here, group these together. And if I go into indi each of these individual things, maybe I want to change the style, make them red, but without a line. And now what I want to do is I want to take this combined shape and I'm going to come and I'm going to dra drag it over to my scratch pad. And when I put something in my scratch pad, well, now it's going to be available just like one of these symbols that I can reuse it over and over. And if I go to this edit sign, I can actually um, do this and I maybe I want to do like an inhibits sign and I save that. And now if I were to come over here and I were to shape search for inhibits, it should be able to find that. And so you can do things like this in order to introduce shapes that you're gonna use over and over again. So there's a lot of, lot of different things that you can do with this tool and really you just have to play around and find what works for you, but hopefully you find this helpful. This is just a kind of play example, but there's also a lot more serious examples. So I made a bunch of these in undergrad when I was studying for tests. You can see that I'm drawing relationships between different like DNA repair pathways, the components of double-stranded break repair, the process of splicing. You can do comparisons between, say, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. 
Um, you can do sort of Venn diagrams between things like replication and transcription. It's really great that you can draw these custom shapes if you want to draw things like um, stem loops, things like this, various where, where various factors bind to other things, where they come into play. There's a lot, a lot of different things that you can do. And I find that these mind maps are really helpful for kind of allowing you to connect all these concepts to show directionality between like RNA and DNA and trans, um, and protein and the different components of it that are take a role, play a role in these various pathways. Um, and so basically you can show what inhibits what, what activates what, and all of these different things. And because you can make these mind maps really, really big, you can just keep expanding them as you think of new connections. Just keep drawing those connections and this is going to help you organize these concepts in your mind and be able to see how all of this is really interrelated. I love that this flexibility means that you can be creative in your thinking about how these concepts interrelate. So some things might activate other things, some things might inhibit other things, some things might lay the foundation for other things. And so there's all these different forms of connections that you can draw. And by having this kind of free, um, free thinking format, this where you can just let your mind wander and write down those thoughts, you're able to really be creative in your thinking and think at a much deeper level. This is also going to help you study for your tests to see everything kind of laid out and how you can think about concepts rather than just memorization in order to make, make studying easier, but also make it so that you're really understanding what you're learning. And you can also just use them for fun things or just organizational things that don't even have to be sciencey. So I just find this draw.io tool to be um to be very helpful. And again, I'm not endorsing the paid endorsement or anything like this. I've just found this helpful over the years and I wanted to share it in case that you could find it helpful too. And so happy mapping.